We thrifted this mirror, I think it was sometime back in the summer for $15 and it's just been sitting in the garage getting dusty. It's because we've been trying to figure out, it's so amazing, what are we gonna do to it? So what we're gonna do with it is we're gonna take the mirror out of the back and we're gonna layer on a bunch of milk paint and hopefully make it chippy and make it more awesome. We're gonna be using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. It comes in powder form in a little package. This is moody blue. We're also going to accent it with the flower sack color, which is a really nice white. I've got an old crusty cup here that's been used for paint before. And I'm gonna do two scoops of this. This scooper is about two tablespoons. So I've got two scoops and I'll put two scoops of water in there as well. This is warm water. And we're not gonna be doing any extra bond because we want it to chip. So this is just a $10 immersion blender off of Amazon. You could use a whisk if you don't have an immersion blender and a fork works too. All right, I'm gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes, let the pigments all dissolve with the water, then we'll start painting. We're gonna use it for accent and some blending. So I'm just gonna do one scoop of that. Won't need more than that. Warm water. This is the back of the mirror. We're gonna go ahead, since it's easy enough to get these nails out, and pull the mirror out, hopefully without breaking it. We're planning on using a lot of layers of paint, so we don't wanna to have to clean that off the mirror when we're all finished. It'll be easier to just remove it. So I should disclaim, this looks to be handmade, but it is not an antique. For those of you that are thinking I'm painting a priceless antique, it's probably an import from like Mexico or Thailand or whatever. Um, and I want to bring it back to what it would be like if you picture like an old wooden mirror in a like an adobe house or like down in Mexico City, you would have a bunch of different colors and be chippy. And so that's what I'm bringing it back to. I'm using Moody Blue and I'm just going to give it like a really messy first coat. Zeb's going to grab a brush and help me get started. I'm going to go with a little bit bigger brush. Well, I'm going to do details, so. All right. I'm hoping a lot of this chips off so you can see some of that natural wood coming through. So I'm not worried about full coverage. Perfection is definitely not needed with this paint finish because we are going to be taking a majority of this paint back off. So I'm just gonna put it on there, see how it chips and then I will be sanding and wet distressing to bring back all this beautiful detail. So next we're gonna be taking flower sack, which is milk paint all mixed up here, and I'm gonna paint all the details out, and then I will probably come back and touch up just a few of the areas that are streaky with the moody blue, and we'll be ready to distress. Okay, so we decided to go a little lighter. I'm just taking a dry paintbrush. I was pulling off some of the white, and I'm just gonna come and just lightly go over it. So I'm just dry brushing and going through and framing everything with the white to add some highlights. So you're not going for full coverage, just trying to bring out the details. So this brush is pretty dry. I'm going over the top of the white just to tone it down a little bit. So the first coat of the Moody Blue was a little bit thin and there's a few spots that are streaky. So I'm just gonna take and hit those spots to get rid of some of the streaky look. We didn't get any chippy. That happens sometimes. I told Zeb, I said, we should probably use some shellac. And he said, no, it'll be fine. But that's okay, we're gonna make it distressed and chippy anyways. I'm gonna start by hand sanding and I'm just gonna hit this as much as I can, see how it comes off and then maybe we'll do some wet distress, some white wax, I'm not sure. So I'm just using warm water, old rag, and I'm gonna come pull some of this paint off 
wet distressing and I'm hoping maybe that will activate some of the paint to get chippy, I don't know. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But it is a good way to take off a lot of paint fast and smooth it out. I wanna bring back some of that original stain and wood grain. So the more I wet distress, the more I realized that I wanted a lot of this beautiful natural wood grain to come through. So I went a little bit heavier than usual, but it really works for a piece like this. Because it's hand carved and it still leaves a lot of the texture in the wood, the paint just kind of sticks down in the nooks and crannies and gives it a beautiful weathered patina. I want it to have a matte finish. So this is just gonna get a coat of clear wax and then we'll be finished. We'll probably buff it off once the clear wax sits for a few hours and the project will be done. So with a project like this, you definitely wanna have a good stiff wax brush because it's gonna allow you to get down into the nooks and crannies and details where a lint-free rag just really isn't gonna do that or it's gonna make your hand hurt by the time you're finished. So now that it's all clear waxed, I think I wanna add back more white wax just in the carved details. Dry brushing the white on gave some beautiful variation in tones, some lighter areas, but I wanna get it deep down into the cracks. So I'm just taking my flat top brush, this is my five cent, and I'm using this because it's a little bit smaller, so it's gonna allow me a little bit more control than a traditional wax brush. I just wanna get that wax down into the details, and I'm not even waiting, I'm just coming back and just... Is that a dry paper towel? Yeah, it's just a dry paper towel. You probably should use a lint-free rag, but I don't have one handy. I'm just gonna wipe it back immediately and just leave it down into the cracks. I feel like I want it to look like it lived somewhere where the salty air just kind of oxidized it and made it age over time. So this white really helps. This is the Paint Pixie Buff Brush. It's specifically designed for buffing wax and you can get a ton of surface area. It works really quick and you can even get a really high sheen out of wax with this. We're not really after a high sheen, so I'm just wiping off the excess wax with it and done. I'm not gonna go over it more than once. So our wax is still not quite all the way dry, and by buffing it right now without letting it dry and then buff it, we're not gonna get that high sheen. It's gonna stay dull, which is what we want. I'm mostly just wiping off the excess and working the wax down into all the cracks with the buffer. So one of the nice things about wax, you know you have good coverage and you've buffed it enough, when the buffer or the rag that you're buffing with no longer drags. You can run it pretty smooth and it doesn't want to catch. In about 24 hours, it should no longer feel waxy. If it does, go ahead and give it another buff and you should be good. Using milk paint, white wax, and clear wax, we got a really fun aged effect on this piece. I was hoping to get chippy crackle and that didn't happen, but what did happen is we used the sander and some wet distress and we kept distressing until a lot of the natural wood grain came through and it gave it a very weathered finish. So I didn't really want her to white wax it. I thought it looked pretty good, but once we're done, it actually really makes those details pop and it's subtle. It's not in your face with the white detail contrast to the blue. I wanted it to look like something that had been aged over time. Maybe it spent some time by the ocean. I think it turned out great. To achieve this look, you can get these products at jamierayvintage.com. We use Sweet Pink and Smilk Paint in Moody Blue flower sack, we used white and clear wax, and we used paint pixie brushes as well as the paint pixie buffy to buff all the wax in. So comment below, let us know what you think. Do you like it this way or do you like it better with the raw wood? We know there's a bunch of people that are gonna have varying opinions, so we wanna know what you think. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.
hit the subscribe button.